there's some stuff in there that I really don't know what it is. There is quite a lot in this one, you know. I can see loads. Bloody hell. Our rivers flow in sunken valleys and bring life to our greatest cities and most remote countryside. This is such a bleak sample. But they're under threat from something we use every day. Plastic. So this year, we went to investigate the scale of the problem and find out what we can do to change course. From bags to microbeads, packaging to straws, the issue of single-use plastic has been grabbing headlines and trending across our timelines. We've seen seabirds feeding plastic to their young, huge garbage patches in the Pacific, and whales washing up with bellyfuls of plastic on our shores. The impact on marine life and our oceans is becoming clear, but to understand more about the problem, we need to look closer to home. Last year, scientists in Manchester undertook a pioneering study of the River Tame, which revealed shockingly high levels of microplastics. On the River Mersey, we caught up with Dr James Rothwell, who worked on this study. So we've got a, got a plastic fragment there, and this, and this material, even though it's large pieces of, of organic material, the microplastics can all be sort of nestled within that. So we sampled a comprehensive 40 sample sites, collecting those sediments off the channel bed and looked at microplastics present within those channel bed sediments. And we found really, really high values of microplastics. If that work was to be repeated in another urban environment, I suspect you'd find equally high values of microplastics. And if this is just one river, could this be an indicator of just how polluted other UK rivers might be? So in early spring, we started our journey to test 13 rivers for plastic, from the Thames in London to the Lagan in Northern Ireland. In this investigation, we looked for microplastics, which are tiny pieces of plastic that either started out life that way, in the case of microbeads, or have broken down over time from larger plastics, like bottles or bags, and just about anything else that's made of plastic and has found its way into our environment. We use a filtration device called a mantinet that sits on the surface water of the river and collects our sample. We then go through the sample, look for any obvious bits of plastic, and we jar it up and send it for analysis at our lab in Exeter. So how exactly does plastic get into our rivers? There are a number of ways in which plastics are entering our rivers in the UK. And these include industrial waste from factories, sewage outflows, runoff from roads, farms. If the government allows this overconsumption of plastic to remain unchecked, we'll see a further decline in all our wild habitats at a time when there are really so many other challenges facing these wild species that I am interested in trying to protect. Actually, I'm really, I want to see we'll what's in there yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a look. Look, there, is that polystyrene there? Maybe, well, there's a bright red fragment. Can you see that one? Our rivers are home to a wealth of wildlife, and we're concerned about the impact plastic pollution could have on these species if it's found to be widespread across the UK. The wildlife in the river is absolutely wonderful. In fact, you can get a, a world premiere just now because uh, on Saturday, my wife and I were out collecting life belts that vandals had thrown in, and we saw our first ever otter. But we get seals coming up, we get swans, there's a lot of kingfishers. Swallows should be back any week now. The UK's rivers are home to over 30 native species of fish, a huge variety of birds, insects, and loads of other creatures. They're all part of a complex ecosystem that pollutants like plastic can easily tip out of balance. So I'm trying to just photograph the wildlife normally and, and avoid the plastic, but often it's, it's unavoidable. They're, they're eating it, they're, they're hunting in it, they're using it for their homes, uh, and it's quite distressing to see. And the one that really sticks out in my mind was along a river in Norfolk, and we were trying to find otters in the day, which is hard enough anyway. 
Uh, but we did find this, this young, uh, young female and she was fishing in amongst these sunken tree roots. And there was a huge buildup of plastic. So she'd come out right next to it and then go fishing amongst it. So she was actually using that to find small fish because they were hiding along there. It was really saddening to see that this charismatic creature amongst all this litter. So one of the images I found most moving is of the caddis fly. So caddis flies are these small kind of river flies and they create a kind of shell to protect them. And that's normally out of small stones or dead leaves. And I'd seen reports that they were incorporating small pieces of plastic. And sadly, it wasn't that difficult to find. And you were kind of getting like really bright pieces of plastic. Um, but some of them would have two, three pieces of this in them. And of course, then that moves up the food chain. Studies have found that over a quarter of fish in the Thames estuary are eating plastic and this could have devastating repercussions for the ecosystems in our rivers. So the juvenile fish, they'll be looking to feed onto the water fleas, so they can easily mistake something as a microplastic. At this point, if you're finding plastics, you know, there's without a doubt going to be uh, an impact on that point in the food chain. For other species, if they're ingesting large pieces of plastics, then it is literally filling their guts and causing them to starve. After months of sampling and speaking to experts, we learned a lot about the state of our rivers, but their accounts of plastic are only part of the story. These are the rivers we tested, and these are the rivers where we found plastic, in every single one. In the River Mersey alone, we collected over 800 plastic particles in just 30 minutes. In some of these areas, I expected there to be no plastics there. They looked beautiful, the pristine rivers. And what's shocking is that when you then analyse those samples, that actually there is this hidden pollution that we can't observe. And this plastic has become a, a part of, of our landscape. We're all talking about plastic. But in reality, plastic production is set to quadruple in the next 30 years, which will mean even more pollution flowing into our oceans and increased problems for wildlife and the climate. Recycling alone isn't the answer. Plastic can only be recycled a few times before it can no longer be used. Community cleanups can't keep up with the scale of the problem and will only ever scrape the surface. So what needs to change if we want to protect our natural world? Now what retailers need to be doing is fundamentally just using less plastic. They can make their items ready to be reused, they can give you items that you can go back and refill in the shop. Where packaging isn't necessary at all, they should just get rid of it. Businesses unfortunately have a bit of a bad habit of setting themselves targets and making big promises and then really not meeting them. And that's why we need government to set targets in law to reduce the amount of plastic that we use. This year the government will be drafting the Environment Bill legislation that will lay out how we can restore our natural world and maintain environmental standards if and when we leave the EU. It's the first bill of its kind in over 20 years and a unique opportunity for the UK to lead the rest of the world in tackling plastic pollution. If your bath was overflowing, you wouldn't run and get a mop and bucket. What you would do is you would go and you would turn off the tap. Now that's exactly what business and government need to be doing. Uh, we need to be tackling this problem at source and reducing the amount of plastic that we make and use. Our investigation revealed that the River Mersey had proportionally more plastic than even the Great Pacific garbage patch, which is widely considered to be the most polluted expanse of water on Earth. We were horrified by what we found in our rivers and we needed to make sure that those in power felt the same way too. A strong environment bill is so crucial to protect nature and wildlife. We need to make sure we've got organisations with real teeth to enforce strong environmental protection here in the UK. For me, the river is a hugely important part of my life. I've lived on the Thames for, for many years now. And I, I can see a river that is in so many ways improving. You know, we have otters on our stretch of the Thames for the first time. We have water that is better in quality, that is more oxygenated, and that is filling up with plastic. And it's not just the plastic you can see, but the tiny microfibers, microbeads, and microplastics that you can't. And those are, are so, so important. Once they're in the rivers, then they're basically bound for the sea and they become a global problem. In 2019, London has been occupied by protesters for days on end demanding action for our climate. Young people have gone on strike to stand up for the earth they will inherit. 
and thousands of us from across the UK went to Westminster to speak directly to our MPs about the future of our environment. This government pledged to leave our natural world in a better place than they found it. The Environment Bill is their chance to keep that promise.